today we have some reasons to believe that there could be many universes out there so that our current observable universe is only a very small part of a big, uh, very big universe. And these different parts of the universe, they have very different physical laws. It feels gravity, uh, it exerts a gravitational force, and it makes things clump together. And we think that dark matter is really the engine by which galaxies formed and structures in the universe formed. Los mapas cósmicos son máquinas del tiempo. Tenemos la maravillosa oportunidad de, de ver las cosas del pasado hoy en día. Si tú consigues medir esta velocidad en, en objetos en dos tiempos distintos, de ahí puedes deducir la aceleración. of the universe is accelerating instead of being uh, slowing down as, as gravity would normally predict. This has been interpreted as having some something called a uh, substance called dark energy which would make up 70% of the energy and matter content of the universe, 70%. Those two teams, led by three astronomers, have been recognized by being awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics 2011 for the discovery of the acceleration of the universe. But we still don't know what is the acceleration due to. We still don't know if it is some the curvature of the universe or is it an actual substance that my cup of tea also has some dark energy in it and everywhere else in the universe has got that. We are interested in looking at the large scales in the universe, right? So the scales of galaxies, galaxy clusters, and objects really far away, way, way beyond our own solar system. Of course, that it's also possible with this instrument to study nearby objects and so. But our main goal is to go for these large-scale structures. And the idea behind that is that in the very early universe, you have... Um, the universe is very uniform with small fluctuations. And as the universe grows older and grows larger, these fluctuations, they grow as well. Matter starts to collapse into these potential wells and you see a formation of structures. So all the large scale structures we see today, galaxy clusters, filaments between galaxy clusters, they are all originated from this primordial structure. Very interesting because they are the largest gravitationally bound structures and basically what you see is many galaxies together they have similar colors similar properties and but it's also interesting what you don't see in addition to the, uh, those galaxies what you have is a large blob of dark matter that is invisible to us but we can detect the galaxies and with that we can trace they form over billions of billions of years uh, in the history of the universe, their and formation will be affected by the expansion of the universe. So if there's too much dark energy, for instance, if the acceleration is too fast, the number of massive big clusters will be smaller than if you wouldn't have such a strong force pulling uh, the universe apart. It's important for us to detect as many galaxy clusters as we can, to detect them as well as we can very precisely and determine their mass to know how big they are. And
this discovery about in 1998 that the universe expansion is accelerating, particularly motivated by that in the last, I would say, 10 years or so, is the discovery that was awarded the Nobel Prize this year. There have been a lot of attempts to modify Einstein's theory to explain this phenomenon, namely, maybe when you go to very large scales, Einstein's theory breaks down. And that's why, counterintuitively, when the universe expands, it doesn't slow down, but in fact, it speeds up. I have also worked on these theories, but I have to say, experience of a lot of people to try to improve or modify Einstein's theory is that at best it's partially successful. Basically, Einstein's theory is just so such a beautiful, coherent framework. If you try to add anything to it or try to improve it, either you run into inconsistencies or it just makes the theory very ugly, aesthetically not very pleasing and complicated. I think it's very likely, at least at low energies, Einstein's theory is correct. the term we use to uh, refer to whatever energy that dominates the universe currently that is responsible for making the universe accelerate. We call it dark energy because we do not know what it is. It doesn't emit light and the only way we know its presence is by actually measuring very carefully how the universe expansion changes with time. Let's say for example if you throw a rock up into the sky, as the rock go up you expect the rock to slow down. And that's because basically gravity is attractive. So if you have anything that try to expand, gravity will just hold it back and try to slow down the expansion. So the surprise about 10 years ago was that the universe expansion was actually not slowing down at all. It's in fact accelerating. And that energy is the term we use to describe whatever substance might be responsible for this surprising fact. energy camera is special because it has, um, well first of all it's really really big which allows us to measure a large area of the sky quickly. The other thing that's special about it is that the detectors or the film of the camera are more sensitive to the red or the high wavelength light than uh, normal cameras and that lets us probe deeper into the universe, closer back to the Big Bang. And uh, so those two features are, are the main unique features of DCAM. telescope control station in the control room from control the telescope. Up here we have a, a live view of the telescope. When it's dark you can't, you can't actually see that. We have another camera which sees a bit more detail. This is uh, the telescope control now. is all digital, all handled by computer. We actually listen to the telescope and the instrument. Uh, we have a speaker up here and an amplifier system and there's a microphone upstairs. There's another microphone here so we can do it two way as well if someone's working upstairs. We'll have many spin-offs. We're carrying out the survey to really understand dark energy and why the universe is speeding up. This kind of survey that will be built upon in the future Dark Energy Survey is, is sort of the next major big survey of the universe that will build upon the techniques that we've developed, probe even further into the universe. Uh, I hope it'll be an inspiring tool uh, for people to learn about the universe. Tenemos muchos tipos de evidencia, pero quizás 
la más tradicional y la más apabullante viene de que hemos medido a día de hoy el espectro de decenas de millones de galaxias. El espectro lo que te muestra es la descomposición de la luz en sus colores y estos espectros tienen unas formas características que conocemos muy bien por los espectros de las estrellas que lo componen y por las leyes del laboratorio. Todos tienen unas características comunes que conocemos, en particular tienen líneas que son como huellas dactilares, corresponden a las predicciones concretas de la mecánica cuántica y son predicciones muy precisas. Lo que ya se vio a principios del siglo pasado es que estos espectros, cuando observas galaxias lejanas, son diferentes, están corridos respecto a los espectros que se miden en el laboratorio. Este corrimiento eh, es un efecto muy conocido, sí, conoce como el efecto Doppler y corresponde simplemente al movimiento relativo entre el observador y el receptor. Podemos saber con gran precisión cuál es la velocidad de esta galaxia. El día de hoy se han medido millones de estos espectros y todos ellos nos dan la misma imagen, que es que las galaxias, todas ellas, se están alejando a un ritmo que corresponde a una expansión básicamente uniforme. ¿no? Si tú consigues medir esta velocidad en, en objetos en dos tiempos distintos, de ahí puedes deducir la aceleración. Esta sería, digamos, la forma simplificada. En la práctica eh, es un poco más complicado porque para hacer esta referencia necesitas saber los tiempos. Y en cosmología, saber el tiempo es lo mismo que saber la distancia. Tiempo es distancia. Lo que, lo que tú observas siempre corresponde a algo que está justamente a la distancia que tarda la luz en llegarte. O sea que, en esencia, la idea es simplemente la misma que la de la expansión. entender cómo se forman las estrellas, las galaxias, los planetas, en definitiva, cómo hemos llegado hasta aquí. ¿no? Necesitamos un contexto, necesitamos entender en qué geometría se están formando los objetos. Por tanto, el universo acelerado es como el marco donde intentamos entender la formación de estructuras. Sí, las leyes de la física son las que creemos que son, por ejemplo, si la gravedad se comporta como creemos, entonces, a partir de una determinada ley de expansión y de una aceleración cósmica, podemos predecir cómo van a crecer las estructuras. Y esto es algo que también podemos medir. O sea, que podemos ver si el modelo cuadra, o sea, si eh, el ritmo de expansión y su aceleración cuadra con el ritmo de crecimiento de estructuras. Y eso ya es un gran avance. En eso no. Uno de los métodos es ver cómo la aceleración cambia con el tiempo y el otro sería ver la distribución de crecimiento con el tiempo. La combinación de estas dos cosas, desde luego, nos ayudarán a acotar la respuesta.